Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Margaret's Church in Annapolis. Glad you could be here to worship with us today. Join us for our opening hymn.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 15. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his, but his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Gashon <clears throat> and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring back my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when breathing live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Romans 11, 1 through 2a, 29 through 32. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. This woman must have thought that God had abandoned her. She must have thought that even though she was a faithful person, even though she sought out cure, she, she prayed, that somehow God had let her alone. Somehow God had turned God's back on her and gone on God's way. She must have felt that way. She was desperate. And I wonder, when we feel that way, what is our response? Right? Um, a lot of us, I think, get our backs up, right? And we defend ourselves. And we cling to this thought that, that we are worthy of God's love, that, that, that just because we're good people that we deserve good things. And I think you and I both know that that's not always the case. Just because we do something good, it doesn't mean that we get good in return, no matter how many karma points we chalk up. I wonder how many of us believe, or at least feel sometimes in our lives, that God has abandoned us, and that somehow God has wronged us. There are a lot of people in Rome that thought that way. So when Paul wrote his letter to the Romans, he talked about that. And he talked specifically to the Gentile believers in Rome. This is important because he told the Gentiles, he said, look, do you think that God abandoned the Israelites? Did God forget about Israel? Did God choose not to honor the covenant? By no means. God still loves Israel. Just because, just because God now loves the Gentiles doesn't mean that God now doesn't love the Israelites, the Jewish people. A lot of Christians have gotten that completely wrong and frankly dangerously wrong over the last two centuries. And it's fostered a lot of anti-Semitism, unfortunately. Um, so what I want to say is this. Look, Emperor Claudius, before the letter of Rome was written, Emperor Claudius uh, banned Jews in Rome. Now, what would this do to the church, right? What would this do to the Christian church in Rome? All of a sudden, there are no Jewish people in that church. They're all Gentiles. So the Gentiles were feeling super important and super good about themselves. And they must have thought, you see, this is the reason Jesus came. They must have thought this. They must have thought, this is the reason Jesus came. Jesus came for us to supersede the Israelites, Right? To perfect what the Jews had started. No, no, no. That is not what Paul meant. 
It's not what Paul meant, and it's not what Christianity is. Christianity does not supersede Judaism. It does not. It does not complete it. It does not perfect it. They sit side by side. Okay? Let's, let's make that clear right now. So, Emperor Claudius got rid of the Jews. The Gentiles were big in the church in Rome. Paul said, hey, don't feel so good about yourselves. Because clearly the Gentiles had felt like, okay, this is our church now, right? We deserve this. We are the chosen ones now. And they were kind of leaning on that cheap grace that they had conferred onto themselves. Does that make sense? This is what Bonhoeffer says. Bonhoeffer says that cheap grace is grace that we give to ourselves. Think about that. So when we say, I deserve this. I go to church all the time. I deserve to get a good golf score today. I deserve a new Cadillac because I work hard, right? Um, I deserve good things in my life because I'm good to other people. I think that's leaning on cheap grace, right? It's not to say that we don't deserve good things, but it's to say that that's not always the way it works out, right? So think about this. Bonhoeffer goes on to say, he says, costly grace, right? Grace that costs something is linked with a call. And as long as that grace is linked with a call to serve God through serving the least of these, to follow Jesus in servant ministry, as long as that grace is connected to that call, then it's going to cost something. It's going to cost us being vulnerable. It's going to cost us risking our hearts to be broken. It's going to risk us going out into dangerous places on the margins of society and allowing our hands to be the hands of Christ and serve other people. That grace costs something. And anyone can do it, right? You don't have to come to church to do it. You don't have to read the Bible to do it. You don't even have to believe in God to do it. You just do it. God uses all of our hands. Jewish hands, Buddhist hands, Muslim hands, Christian hands, non-believing hands, atheist hands. God uses all those hands to do God's work. But when we let those hands confer upon ourselves God's grace, that's cheap grace. When these hands are broken open and offer ourselves to the world and says, how much can I give? That grace costs something. And that is the grace that lasts. That is the grace that reminds us that God does never leave us. That is the grace that reminds us that God is always with us, that God will never abandon us, but rather that God is always giving us a call, always calling us to live with that grace that costs something, that means something. And when we follow God, when we do the works of Jesus, that grace is given to us in abundance. Amen. At this point, we'll <clears throat> recite the words of the ancient Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth, of all, all that, that is seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, the, the only Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten of the Father, Father God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the, On the third, third day, he rose again, again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> o God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we, we all, all may be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. creator of all, your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us, a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, 
Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored us to life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Margaret, and all your people into the joy of our, your true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived and died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And now, O God, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen.